For you are great You do miracles So great There is no one else Like you There is no one else Like you For you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you good morning my precious friends and partners and listening audience on this morning we're talking about ridiculous miracles you see there comes a time in all of our lives where we need God to do something ridiculous, a catastrophic miracle, a ridiculous breakthrough, something that can't be explained, something that's never been done before. He said, I'll do a new thing, you know. Nothing's too hard for God. You are not crazy to believe God to do the impossible. After all, He is God. And I believe He wants to give you ridiculous ridiculous miracles you do miracles so great there is no one else like you glory to God there is no one else like you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you we love you this morning oh god there is no one else like you praise god praise god praise god praise god now listen this morning we're talking about ridiculous miracles father i pray you speak to your people through your word this morning now look i'm going into the book of joshua chapter 10 Verses 6 through 14. Joshua chapter 10, <laughs> verses 6 through 14. Now, on yesterday, it was Joshua chapter 14, verses 6 through 14. So don't get confused today. Today, we're talking about ridiculous miracles. Listen to what the Bible says in Joshua chapter 10, verses 6. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp to Gilgal, saying, Slack not your hand from your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. Now listen, these were men of Gibeon. They were the Gibeonites. These, this were the, this was a group of people that actually surrendered and became an ally of the children of Israel because they realized that God was with Joshua. I would join him too. <laughs> so listen, as a result of this group of people becoming an ally with Joshua, the surrounding nations looked at them as traitors. And so what they did was they went and surrounded Gibeon and decided that, you know what, we're going to just wipe Gibeon out. But glory to God, they had a divine connection. You know the name Joshua actually means salvation. All right? Watch this. And Joshua is a type of Christ, like a shadow and type in the Old Testament. So they came to Joshua. They sent an urgent message and say, don't slack your hand at all. In other words, don't slow down. You need to come in haste because these people are about to wipe us out. And you are the only help we have. Listen to verse 7. So Joshua ascended. My God, I love Joshua. It's a man of action. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. Now you know something's about to happen here. The Bible says in verse 8, this is what I love, because these men knew the voice of God. They didn't just act. They waited to hear from God. Now Joshua just stepped out on faith, but his heart is crying out to God. He's dependent on God for direction. In verse 8 says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Man, I love when God talks. 
Fear them not. I want you to hear good. Listen to the word. For I have delivered them into your hand. The battle didn't even start. And God said, don't worry, this is pretty much over. The battle is yours. This victory is yours, Josh. And listen to what God tells Joshua. He repeated something to Joshua now that he told him at the death of Moses. God said to Joshua, there shall not a man of them, glory to God, not one of them is going to stand before you, Joshua, because I got your back. I'm on your side. I'm with you, Josh. And that's why David said, even when I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I fear no evil because God is with me. God is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. I say, God, I dare you to open your mouth right now and say, God is on my side. Now watch this. So God said to Joshua, there shall not a man of them stand before you. I'm going with you, Joshua. And the Bible says, because of what God said to Joshua, Verse 9 says, Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. Sometimes you got to sit up all night in prayer waiting before God. I know there was a time when me and my wife, our backs were against the wall. Glory to God. Listen to this. We needed God to give us a miracle. We needed a certain amount of money to be able to move into this place that we needed to move into. And my God, we waited on God late that night. And we, listen, and I told my wife, I said, look, look here, babes. <coughs> I said, I feel like someone's about to knock on the door any minute. And about two in the morning, glory to God, someone knocked on the door. And say, Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy. <laughs> I feel the Holy Ghost. God spoke to us and told us to help you. And we were able to move into the place we needed to move in. I say, God is a present help in the time of trouble. It's worth praying all night sometimes. That's what the Bible says about Jesus. In Luke chapter 6 verse 12, the Bible says Christ stayed up and he prayed all night in prayer to God. And the next day when he did his meeting, great miracles took place. The blind saw, the deaf heard, the cripples walk. We serve a miracle working God. Someone shout yes. Shout yes. My God, I feel the anointing here. And the Bible says Joshua came suddenly against the enemy and went up from Gilgal all night. Listen to verse 10. And the Bible says, And the Lord discomfited the enemy before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goes to Beth Horn and smote them to Azekah and unto Makeda. Listen here. The Bible says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. The apostle Paul told Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. The apostle Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. God is on your side and when the enemy come against you like a flood the spirit of the living God will raise up a standard against him. God is on your side. David said the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked and my enemies came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Devil, I got news for you. We are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ that loved us and gave himself for us. The word of God declares greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. You're not going under. You're going over. You're coming out of this more than a conqueror. Shout yes. 
shout ridiculous miracles ridiculous hey hallelujah now watch this so the bible says god began to work with now watch this god didn't move or do nothing until joshua moved god's waiting on you some of you talking about you waiting on god god's waiting on you because god didn't help joshua until joshua acted even though god told joshua i'm gonna give you the victory nothing happened until joshua acted now watch this listen to verse 11 verse 11 says and it came to pass as they fled from before israel and were in the going down to beth Oren, that the lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them and unto azekah and they died god sent a bunch of big hail and busted them up they were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. That meant God wiped most of their enemies out. Now I'm coming to the ridiculous miracle. Now watch this. Then spoke Joshua to the Lord in that day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel because you see, listen, they were defeating the enemy, but they did not finish defeating the enemy and the sun was about to go down. Had the sun went down right then, Joshua would have not wipe all the enemy out. And the Bible says, the Bible says in verse, the Bible says here in verse 12, Then spoke Joshua to the Lord in that day, when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun! S-U-N, this man's talking to the sun. Man, people probably looking at this man like he's out of his mind. He's talking to the sun. I didn't know the sun have airs, but apparently it does. He said to the sun, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of, of Agilon. I am telling you, sun and moon, you can't set, you can't move another further. You can't move another second. You can't move another inch. You can't move another centimeter until God give me the victory. I'm preaching to somebody this morning. You need more time. Time is running out on you. God knows how to redeem the times because the days are evil. And the Bible says in verse 13, and the sun stood still and the moon stayed until Joshua and the people of God had a Avenge themselves upon their enemies. My God. The Bible says in verse 14. And there was no day like that before or after it. That the Lord hearkened to the voice of a man. For God fought for Israel. Joshua said son you can't sit now. I need more daylight time to wipe this devil out. The devil was hoping the sun go down. So he can escape. My God. When God turned the tide on the enemy. The devil is gone. I wish to God that he can escape from out of your presence because it's not by power it's not by might but it's by my spirit says the Lord of hosts the Bible says resist the devil and he'll flee from you there comes a time in your life there come a time in my life when God will work a ridiculous miracle something that will shut the devil up look at Job everything Job went through but when you come to chapter 42 the devil have no say in the matter because the Bible says and God bless the latter end of Job more than the beginning for God, God gave Job twice as much as what he had before in other words because of all the hell the devil put Job through God gave him double for his trouble somebody shot ridiculous 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 miracles I pray for you my brother I pray for you my sister that God would give you a ridiculous miracle a ridiculous a ridiculous breakthrough a ridiculous turnaround a ridiculous healing a ridiculous reunification of your marriage a ridiculous breakthrough in your finances a ridiculous bringing your family back together that child getting delivered that child being set free that grandmother your mom your dad being saved delivered and set free from the power of the devil are you listening to me this morning i say ridiculous somebody open your mouth and shout ridiculous 
Rando lo bobo shata ramanda na bose. Roko to ramanda la la bokosha. Hallelujah. Yes. Listen here, friend. If you are watching this broadcast and you are not a born again Christian. God is calling on you this morning. You're not going to get a ridiculous miracle without Jesus. Now for you Christians that's right with God and walking with God, or God's going to blow your mind. But if you are not a born again Christian, if you are not saved, if you have not yet surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus, because when Gibeon got in trouble, they cried out to Joshua. Joshua's name represents Jesus. Are you hearing me? His name represents salvation. His name represents deliverance. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. They called on Joshua. And Joshua delivered them. He set them free. And the same way the people in Gibeon call on Joshua. That's the same way God is wanting you to call on the Lord Jesus right now. Surrender your life to him. It's time to quit running from God. It's time to surrender. It's time to come clean with God and give your life to Jesus. I want you to pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I'm asking you to forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Forgive me, O oh Lord, for I have sinned against you. I'm ashamed of what I've done. But nonetheless, nevertheless, I come to you asking for forgiveness. Your word says whoever comes to you, you will in no way turn him away. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the Son of God. He is the Savior of this world. He died on the cross for my sins and on the third day, you raise him from the dead for my justification. Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Listen here, friend. If you prayed that prayer, your sins have been forgiven. Your sins have been forgiven. You are now a child of God. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. I want you to write to us. Info at seanpinder.net Right under this video, Pastor Sean, I have just surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. I'm a born again Christian. I'm a new Christian in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of my sins. You are saved and on your way to heaven because Jesus is coming again, my friend. And he's coming for a church without spot or without wrinkle. He loves you with an everlasting love. And I want to say to all of you, partner with us, stand with us in the work of God. Support this ministry through your donations, through your seeds, through your love offerings. We appreciate every last one of you. We don't take you for granted. This is how God intends the ministry to work. It is supported by those who are blessed by it, who are touched by it, delivered and set free by it. We love you guys and we will never take what you do for granted. Remember, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Remember to follow us on Facebook. Connect with us on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Pinterest. We love you guys and we care deeply about you. We don't take you for granted at all. And listen, we look forward to being with you on tomorrow morning as we talk about you serve a prayer answering God. On tomorrow morning, you serve a prayer answering God. We love you and we say God bless you. We look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.